Omasato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotir gamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya avir avir ma eti rudrayate dakshinam mukham te namam pahinityam te namam pahinityam om shanti 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 lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light lead us from death to immortality light us through and through and guide us evermore with thy loving presence om peace Peace, peace. Well, today um, I would like to introduce Swami, revered Swami Chetananji Maharaj from our St. Louis Center. He is one of our senior most Swamis in the Ramakrishna order. And I think we sent you the biography, so I don't need to read his biography, except that you know he's a prolific author, writer, researcher, scholar, and lecturer. So we're very, very fortunate to have him today speaking to us about the topic, See God with Open Eyes. And this topic actually is on a book that, one of his latest books that he's done. See God, see God with open eyes. Um, how many of you have read through this book by a show of hands? Okay, so, so a few of us. If you haven't received this book yet, let me just tell you a little bit about what this book is about. It starts into the question asking, is it possible to see God with our own eyes? Can we see God in our waking state? And if not with our normal eyes, what type of eyes are needed to see God with. And he goes on to talk about basically there's two types of techniques. He's going to talk to you about meditation and prayer and what Sri Ramakrishna has said about the instructions he's given to us about meditation and prayer. And in the first four or five chapters, if you're a lover of Sri Ramakrishna, if you start to see that he's something, he's an avatar. There's something unique about him. He's going to go into how to meditate on an avatar. How to meditate on Sri Ramakrishna. And he's going to talk about Ramakrishna's form, his leela, Ramakrishna's mind, his story. The unique, and, and when you dive into this, you'll see how your mind starts to become cleansed and purified. And through this process, how God becomes more and more revealed. So today, with our great honor, we are so humbled to have revered Swami Chaitananji today here from St. Louis to speak to us about See God with Open Eyes. Revered Swami Chaitananji Maharaj. Rupam Rupa Viborjita is Sabato, Tenina Jat Kulpitam Stutiani Bachini, Takilo Guru, Durikritam Yan Maya Bapit Tanchani Rakritam Yatito Yatradina Shantai Bhyam of Jagadishatad Bhikalata Doshatrayam Matkritam Om Shanti 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 Lord, I made three mistakes in my life. My first mistake, I know you are formless. But for the sake of my vegetation, I imagined your form. My second mistake, 
आई नो यू आर इनफिनिज बियॉन्ड एक्सप्रेशन बट फॉर द सेक ऑफ माई प्रेयर आई ग्लोरीफाई यू विद वर्ड्स माई थर्ड मिस्टेक आई नो यू आर ऑल परवेजिंग यू आर एवरी वर्ड बट फॉर द सेक ऑफ माई पिलग्रिमेज I travel various places to see you. Lord, please forgive my three mistakes. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace be with you. As you have heard this morning our subject is See God with open eyes. Generally, winter time I come here for a month. Puri Namananda said, "Swami, please come to San Diego and come. That would be wonderful to have a break." Is <laughs> it is a very interesting subject. Does God exist? If he does, why can't you see him? What is God? Who is God? What can he do? What is wrong to have a godless life? How can we get interrupted joy and peace in our life? these are the questions are answered in this book sri ram krishna answer niche the german philosopher says god is dead one american philosopher mentions God is too old. We re- we must replace him. <laughs> we need a new one. And the Jebuchi told me, Swami, God is too old. He does not hear anymore. We perhaps we shall buy a hearing aid <laughs> so that he can he can he can listen to our prayers. Is that the way we are now thinking about God? one of the devotees came to swami madhavananda a great swami and says maharaj have you seen god do you know what he answered i am not ramakrishna you are not vivekananda either <laughs> when swami ji a tremendous passion for truth he was searching He came to Sri Ramakrishna and asked this question straight, "Sir, have you seen God?" Yes. Not only I have seen, I can show you. He never, never got this kind of answer. What he meant? Then he said, "I can, I can see you. I can see God more than I see you." what he meant he meant when i am seeing i am seeing this form his face his body and all these things sri ramakrishna does not see only the the external body he sees his mind he sees his past present future he can see more that he said to swami ji i can see more than i see you with my open eyes very interesting this this way sri ramakrishna answered then what happened sri ram krishna touched him bas the whole world just started to disappear the building mind everything disappeared what are you doing what are you doing i have parents at my home <laughs> then swami ji again sri ram krishna again rab ji suggest and say all right all right 
Swamiji was thinking, this man is physically strong, mentally strong, intellectually strong, ethically, morally strong, spiritually strong. Extremely strong person, personality. That baby can was transformed by a touch. Very interesting. I remember once an atheist came to me in St. Louis. Swami, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I think that is perfectly all right. <laughs> but you must believe in your wife. <laughs> <laughs> don't you believe in your wife? That when you will be in bed, she will not cut your throat at night? <laughs> <laughs> He was looking at me. <laughs> when you're sleeping, that woman will just slash your throat. You have that faith? That's the reason you go to bed with your wife. <laughs> All right, you don't need any God. You just have faith in your wife. Let me tell you, do you believe the pilot in the plane? You have faith in him that you will not bring the plane down. You go to a restaurant, you go eat. You have faith in the chef that he is not going to poison you. You have faith in the surgeon that who is doing surgery, you know, you know that he is not going to kill you. So you have faith of all these people, correct? Only you have no faith in God. That is perfectly all right, go home. <laughs> <laughs> One king, there is a few beautiful Indian folklore. He asked his minister, you talk about God, God, God. I have three questions. If you cannot answer, I shall throw you out. What are the questions? Does God exist? First question. Second, if he does, in what direction does he look? Third question. What can you do? So minister went home, could not answer the questions. The servant saw the master was depressed. Why are you depressed? Well, these are the questions I could not answer. I can answer those questions. Please take me to the king. So he came next day. Oh, king, I want to answer all of your questions. I am the minister's servant. But if you cannot answer, you will be heavily punished. That's all right. What can I do? All right, before I answer your questions, I have a condition. You will have to come down from the throne on the floor. And I shall sit on the throne. And you will have to fold your hands. You will have to ask me questions one after another. Then I shall answer. <laughs> that king said, all right. He sat on the throne, the servant. And the king said, my first question, does God exist? Bring a cup of milk, put it on the table. Does butter exist in that milk? Yes. But can you see? No. But if we churn the milk, butter will float on the top. Correct? Yes. That is the answer. You go home, practice spiritual disciplines, meditate, then you will see God. What is the second question? In what direction does he look? Bring a candle, light the candle on the table. In what direction does the light go? All directions. So God looks all directions. What is the third question? What can he do? Look, O king, I am the servant of this minister. I am on the throne and you are on the floor. <laughs> See what God can do? <laughs> See what God can do. <laughs> Godless life, sometimes they think, you have plenty of money. You have wife, children, family, everything you have. But where is peace and bliss? Ask people, rich people. That is the reason Krishna mentioned in the Gita, 
अनिताम असुगम लोकम इमं प्राप्य भज समाम भज समाम अनितम नॉट रियल इम्पर्मेनेंट असुखम फुल ऑफ मिजरी लोकम दिस वर्ल्ड प्राप्यो हैविंग दिस इम्पर्मेनेंट जॉयलेस वर्ल्ड वर्शिप में वर्शिप में दैट कृष्ण सही जिंदगी था Sometimes we say peace and bliss cannot be bought from the market. You can go to the grocery shop, Ral Bhawn Market, well, five pound peace, ten pound bliss. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot get it. It cannot be bought in the market. I remember in, after the 9/11, we have a big interfaith meeting in St. Louis in the in the. <clears throat> cathedral so then one the religious writer called me swami are you going to the peace conference of course we need some peace then i told that uh, this peace and bliss you cannot buy in the grocery shop <laughs> swami wait wait what you said let me write down next day i saw my my news is on the front page of the newspaper you will have to tell something <laughs> interesting to the news newspaper people There is another Indian folklore. Brahma, the creator, created all these worlds and human beings. Then what he did? He was thinking, if I give everything to my children, they will never come back to me. <coughs> if I give everything to you, you will never come back to me. So I shall create some thing empty in human heart, that is peace and bliss. So they are at a big conference. He called all gods. That where shall we keep it? <laughs> Somebody says, "My children, my human beings, they are very demanding, and they will find out." <laughs> then somebody says, "Why well, don't you put the upper in the above the space?" Well, if you, I don't trust the American people. <laughs> they will go with that space shuttle and get it. <laughs> Will put it under the ocean. Will they will go with submarine? Will put it under the ground. Will they will use the dynamite and break everything? <laughs> Then Brahma says, "Do you know what shall I do? I shall put this peace and bliss in the heart of each human being, inside the heart. So if you really want, you will have to go with him. There is no other way." The kingdom of heaven is within you, Jesus said. Somebody asked Swami Vivekananda, "Where can I see God? Go to the cottage of the poor people. How can I realize God? Serve them. That is the answer Swami Ji gave. If you want to see God, go to the poor people and serve them. They are living gods. That Swami Ji taught us." I interviewed a Swami named Dharmeshananda in 1982 in Banaras. He was very close to Aim, the recorder of the Gospel of Ram Krishna. <coughs> This young Brahmachari was telling Aim, "I don't feel that God exists." Aim replied, "I had the same problem. One day I went to Dukshineshwar." Come here. Here is a seat. Well, it's, I had the M was telling. I had the same problem. Do you know what happened? I went to Dakshineshwar, and after lunch, Sri Ram Krishna was resting, and I was just massaging his feet gently, and I was thinking, he eats. He sleeps, he talks, he walks. He's a human being. Immediately, Sri Ram Krishna got up. Hey, Master, ki bhavcho? Hey, M, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Ek bhavle shab hoye jabe. 
If you think of me, you will achieve everything. That is repeated thrice. If you think of me, you will achieve everything. If you think of me, you will achieve everything. Saying so, boom, he went into Samadhi. I aim was watching. Then after a while, he came back from Samadhi. And he was talking with the given mother. Mother, did I say it or you said it? I said it or you said it? But at that day, I realized that Sri Ramakrishna is God in human form. Somebody was telling me, Swami, I want to see God. I told him, if you see God, you will die within 21 days. Are you ready? <laughs> Finish within 21 days. <laughs> My another disciple came, Swami, I need a little samadhi. <laughs> then I said, well, if you want samadhi, you will have to hire Ridoy. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna, if you read when Sri Ramakrishna was in Samadhi, Sri Ridhari will grab him. Otherwise, he will fall, he will break his teeth. He broke his teeth, he broke his hand. So I told him that before you attain Samadhi, hire somebody. <laughs> that he will grab him. Then his husband, her husband says, Swami, I can do that job. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I ask question, do we really want God? There is another Indian story. Narada, the great sage, saw human beings are full of agony and sufferings. So he went to heaven and told Lord Vishnu, Lord, they are all of your children. I cannot bear their endless sufferings. Please do something for them. Vishnu says, what can I do? Tell me, Narada. Please bring them to heaven. Do you think my children, human beings, want to come to heaven? Well, of course, they do. Vishnu says, Narada, I shall keep the gate of heaven open three days, bring human beings. Narada was excited. He ran to the world and earth. He found an old man seated in a park, very much depressed. Then Narada went to him and says, Sir, do you like to go to heaven? Well, of course I like to go to heaven. Please come with me. Right now, I shall take you to heaven. That old man said, you know, my granddaughter's marriage on, in November. <laughs> <laughs> after that marriage, I only granddaughter, one granddaughter. <laughs> so after the daughter's marriage, then I shall come. <laughs> now the said, only three days, gate will be open. You know, when I shall die, I shall go to heaven, but I shall not be able to see my granddaughter's marriage, so I shall wait. <laughs> Narada could not get him. Then I found another person, a young man, further near the beach, seated, very depressed. What is the matter? Depressed. Why? I newly married, my wife had gone to her folks' home, and I feel very lonely. Narada said, do you like to go to heaven? Well, of course, very painful life. Come with me right now. But well, no, I cannot come. My wife will be back. I shall wait for her. So Narada could not get him either. So he went further. He saw a little boy was playing on the street and said, Hey, do you like to go to heaven? Of course, I heard from my mom the storybook that heaven is a good place. I like to go to heaven. Then the little boy said, if, could, I, could my mom come with me? Of course, go and bring your mom. But the little boy went to him, to, to his mother. Mom, a holy man has come to take us to heaven, let us go. The woman came and scolded Narada. Shall I call 9-11? <laughs>
I shall, you have come to kidnap my son, I shall call police right now. Narada ran away. <laughs> he realized nobody is interested. Who wants to go to heaven? We think this is the best place they are. Just see. But we want to go to God. Now we shall go to the philosophy side. See, how do you see? We see through your eyes, correct? There is a famous Vedanta book called Drik Drishya Viveka, the seer and the sin. The first shloka of that book, Rupam, no, Rupam Drishyam, Lochanam Drik, Tadrishyam, Drikto Manasam, Drishya, Dhivritayaha, Sakshi, Drigeva, Natu Drishyati. This is the first verse, and truly it is the quintessence of Vedanta. What is the meaning of this mantra? <coughs> The form is perceived, and the eye is the perceiver. The eyes see all the scenery human beings we see through the eyes. Again, the eyes are the seen, the mind is the seer. My eyes may be wide open on you, but actually, perhaps I am not seeing you at all. My mind is somewhere else. If mind is not connected to the eyes, eyes cannot see anything. That is the second stage. Third stage, drishya adhivritaya. The mind and its all its modifications <coughs> is perceived. And the seer, the witness self, the Atman is the seer. <coughs> Drigiva, natu drishyati, is verily the perceiver. There is nobody else behind that seer. This Atman is the seer. Shri Mohimni, that is another famous word in the Upanishad, which is established on its own self. It does not depend on anything else. We see. How do you function in this world? With the help of the light? Sunlight? When there is no sun, moonlight? When there is no sun, no moon, stars? When no sun, no moon, what, where is the light? Fire. No sun, no moon, no fire. Where is the light? Think of that, this world is full of darkness, no light. It is in the Jyoti Brahman of the Brihadaranu Kupunishad. Where is the light? How do you see? Then he says, Shabdo Jyotihi, sound is the, has the light. Think of that, the whole world is full of darkness, my neighbor is shouting, help, help, help. Hearing that sound, I can rush to that person. Shabdo Jyoti. When there is no sound, where is the light? Atma Jyoti. The light is the Atman, which is self luminous So we have the beautiful verse in the Upanishad. Tishya Bhasa Sarvam Idam Vibhati. Na tatra surjo jati na chandra tara kam nema vidyuto bhanti kutu ayamogni tamay bhavanta manuvati sarvam teisya bhasa sarvam teisya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati for the sun shines not, not the moon, not the stars, not the lightning when this atman shines, everything shines after it. That is the mantra, how we can see. No, I have to like this. Now, we see. What do you see? 
variety, multiplicity, diversity. Correct? I am seeing you. With so many things we see in this world. Is this vision right or wrong? Vedanta is exploding how to see. This vision is wrong. Why? The Chandra. If you see two moons, what does he mean? Double vision. Your eyes are wrong. When you are driving, you see two cars are coming in front of you. Double vision. That means you have some disease in your eyes. Your eyes are not correct. You are seeing two things, two things, two things. The glaucoma or some disease. Vedanta says, this double vision comes from the disease. So if variety, multiplicity, diversity we see in this world because of ignorance, darkness, maya. Maya makes the one many. We see variety. Ekotto darshan, unity in diversity. That is the way we are supposed to see. We are supposed to see Brahman in everything and every being. Sarvam kollu idam Brahma. But we see man, woman, bad man, good person, bad person, variety we see. That means we have a disease. Name of the disease is ignorance, maya. How to cure it? Bring the light. Maya will disappear. Sri Ramakrishna says, if the room is dark for thousand years, do you think light will come slowly? In the twinkling of an eye, the whole darkness can disappear. That Vedanta teaches. That you will find in this book. <clears throat> but if I have that vision, what will happen? Do you know what will happen? Natatra bijugupshati. You will not be able to hate anybody. The Kachopani, sorry, Ishopani just says, Tatra ka moha ko sha ka shoka ekatta manupashata. If you have seen that unity vision, there is no shoka, no grief, no moha, no delusion. There is no jealousy, no hatred, nothing. The whole world becomes saturated with God consciousness. That is the reason. Upanishad teaches us, Abrita Jakshu, learn how to close your eyes so that you can behold the self within. When, you know, sometimes when I go for walks, if some my, my mind bothers me, I repeat this mantra. It is in the Kotha Upanishad. That Abhrita Chakshu Jama was telling that, you know, God created this mind without going tendencies. Paranchi Khani Bhatrinath Sambhu Parang Pashyanti Nantaratman Koshidhira Pratyagatman Amaikshat Abhrita Chakshu Amrita Tamichan God created this mind without going tendencies. There are some people, they close the eyes so that they can behold the self, the Atman within. That is the way we can see. Sometimes people see that we see so many variety of bad things in this world, what shall we do? A god, lion, tiger, lion, they are all gods. But I, Sri Ramakrishna said, but don't hug them. Salute them from a distance. <laughs> go, 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 please. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna saw everything is saturated with consciousness. Very interesting, this Vedanta philosophy. Mṛttu sa mṛttu māpna uti yāhiya nāna eva puśyati. That person sees death after death. Those who see variety, multiplicity, diversity in this world.
here in the city of Brahman is an abode. What do you want to see in this world? Tell me. So this, in the Chanda Gopanishad, there is a mantra. Idam Brahma Pure Dharam Punjari Kaksham Beshma Dharasmin Antara Akasha Tosmin Jayanta Tananishipya Tadbhijika Shitibya Listen very carefully. In this heart, there is a city of Brahman. City of Brahman. In that, inside the heart, there is a lotus. Inside that lotus, there is empty space. Inside that space, find out what is there. There dwells the Atman. That you must look for. How our scriptures taught us all these beautiful things, you know. Who have seen God? The mystics. Many mystics and illumined souls, many have, people have doubt existence about God and think that it is impossible to see God and their eyes open. The doubters misgiven will be dispelled only if they practice spiritual practices and meditation. Many mystics, we know various people, have realized God, have seen God. Moses. Moses heard the voice of God from the, from the burning bush. He went to Mount Sinai. And there he got the Ten Commandments from God. Saint Teresa, I remember in 1982, sorry, 1992, I went to Spain in Avila to attend a big conference, Contemporary Mysticism. So I spoke about Sri Ramakrishna. So my guide took me to Teresa's convent where she joined. Adjacent there is a church. So one day Teresa came out from her shrine and I saw a little boy standing on the step. Teresa asked, who are you? The little boy said, who are you? Well, I am Teresa of Jesus. Then Teresa asked, who are you? Well, I am Jesus of Teresa. <laughs> Beautiful answer. <laughs> God watches. There is a famous Sufi mystic. He has several disciples. He wanted to test his disciples. He gave one chicken to each disciple and said, you must slash the head of each chicken where nobody can see it and bring it back to me. So all disciples went outside and saw a secluded place. Nobody was watching. Slashed the head of the chicken and brought to their guru. But one disciple did not come. In the evening, he came with live chicken. Well, what is the matter? He said, Sir, Sir, I was trying to slash the chicken, but I saw God was watching. So I saw go God, so I could not cut the I could not cut the throat of the chicken. You are my true disciple. Sri Ramakrishna, if you remember Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Sri Ramakrishna died on 16th August 1886. 1.02 a.m. His body was cremated in the afternoon. In the evening, Holy Mother was removing her bangles. Sri Ramakrishna appeared before him, her, and said, Am I dead? I have just gone from one room to the other. Don't remove the bangles. Sri Ramakrishna appeared. I sometimes say Jesus appeared after three days, Sri Ramakrishna appeared in the same day. Swami <laughs> 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 Vivekananda wrote in the rule book of Belur Monastery, the Lord has not yet given up the Ramakrishna form. Some see him in that form, even now and receive instructions from him. And all can see him if they so desire. The form will last until 
he comes again in another gross body. Though he is not visible to all, that he is in this order and guiding it is a fact of everybody's experience. If you see the Son of God, Avatar, that means you have seen God. Jesus says, He who has sent me, you, he who has seen me, has seen the Father. Avatar and God are identical. I remember there was a big conference, Raymond Panikot. He was a famous theologist. He was a Catholic Jesuit priest. He was my friend. He said, you know, there is a Buddhist canon that if you see Buddha on the street, kill him. Do you know why? Buddha is not a person. Buddha is illumination, consciousness. And there is a Christian canon. If you say Jesus on the street, crucify him. Do you know why? Jesus already resurrected. You will not see him again in the, <laughs> in the form. Mm -hmm. Then I told you, well, if you see Ramakrishna on the stage, have a nice time with him. <laughs> <laughs> don't kill or don't crucify, have a nice time. <laughs> Just chat and have a nice time. <laughs> Someone asked Swami Brahman, can one see Ramakrishna even, even now? The Swami replied, yes, Swamiji saw the Master many times. We also see him from time to time. These are the way the disciples of Ramakrishna said. Swamiji was in Detroit, 1894. He pounded on the missionaries, Christian missionaries, and he exposed them. They became very angry. They wanted to kill him. So after the dinner, they gave him coffee. And Swamiji was about to sip the coffee. Sri Ramakrishna appeared before him and said, don't drink it, it's poison. <laughs> Swamiji pounded. You are not Christians, go back to Christ. It is better to live with Christ in rags on the street than to live without Christ in a palace. Swamiji pounded. The Vedanta scriptures such as Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita emphasizes Brahman or the Atman cannot be perceived through these eyes. Clear. You cannot see God with these eyes. Look what Upanishad says. Sheta Shatra Upanishad. His form is not an object of vision. No one beholds him with the eyes. They who, through pure intellect, and the knowledge of unity, based upon reflection, realize him as abiding in the heart, become immortal. Then Munjok Upanishad says, Brahman is not grasped by the eye, nor by speech, nor by other senses, nor by penance or good works. A man becomes pure through serenity of intellect. Thereupon, in meditation, he beholds him, who is without parts. In the Gita, you remember Krishna gave this cosmic vision to Arjuna. He says, with these eyes of yours you cannot see me. I give you a divine eye. Behold, now, my sovereign yoga power. So if you want to see God, you need divine eye. We call it Tritiyo Chakshu, Thajai, Manas Chakshu, Mental Eye. There are many ways we describe that thing, that how we can see God. How does it work? Look, I went to Palamor Observatory, 200 inches diameter of that telescope. At night time, they see various planets through that telescope. Millions of miles away, they can see. 
with with this eyes you cannot see but through telescope you can see look how science works microscope somebody who goes for blood test he will take the blood and then with the microscope he can see your blood count and all those things if you have any parasites or anything everything that they can see through the blood through microscope through open eyes you cannot see it so you see you need a special eye to see science says you need telescope you need microscope the thing which you cannot see with this open eyes so through meditation a third eye opens that vedanta wants to say and that this book will tell you how to open the third eye with that eye you can see god very interesting <laughs> On twenty-fourth August, eighteen eighty-two, M. A. Ramakrishna. When one sees God, does one see Him with these eyes? Ramakrishna answered, "God cannot be seen with these physical eyes. In the course of a spiritual discipline, one gets a premier shorir, lab body, endowed with premier chokshu, lab eyes, premier corno, lab ears, and so on." One sees God with those love eyes. One hears the voice of God with those love ears. Do you know that is the realm of mysticism? This human body becomes transformed. Prem, bhalvasa. The person really you love that person constantly comes to your mind. in dream in working working here moving you can see that person then do you know what does mean that means your love developed inside you when some people ask me that you know how to attain devotion love could you tell me how to attain love sri ram krishna went to a studio And you wanted to see how they take the photograph. The cameraman was explaining. Do you see? This is the negative. In the, on that negative, one side there is an emulsion, silver nitrate. So the impression comes on that negative, and then from the negative you can make thousands of prints. Hearing that, Sri Ramakrishna went into samadhi. If you have a coating of devotion, love on your mind. that god's impression will remain there forever and any time you want to see god you can see god look how it works shami ji was in pasadena many of you have seen that house now it belongs to vedanta society of southern california 309 montrede road southern california southern pasadena shami ji was killing ralph mrs wife of son Seventeen, eighteen years, young American kid. Ralph, yes, Swami. Ralph, God is so near to us, and we cannot see. Why, Swami ji? <coughs> God is so near to us, and we cannot see. Ralph, how do you see? Swami, I see with my eyes. Can you see your own eyes? American kid. No. But if I have a mirror, I can see my eyes. That is the answer, Ralph. That is the answer. If you have a pure, clean mind, you will see God. You can visualize the self, the Atman within. In all the spiritual disciplines, meditation, japa, mahatu, ji, we are only cleaning the mind. What if? You know, sometimes I think Swami Ji did not quote the scriptures. Swami Ji did not give any philosophical answer. Just use common sense. This is the way you can see God. Just a plain, pure, pure mind. The mind is free from desires, free from doubt. Look what Swami Ji said. 
अद्वैत तत्व समाहित चित्तम प्रज्ज्वल भक्ति पचावृत वृत्तम कर्म कलि परम अद्भुत चिष्टम यामी गुरु शरण भव इदम शमशे राक्षस नाश महास्त्र मास्टर यू आर बोर्न इन दिस एज टू किल द ग्रेटेस्ट डीमन वन कैन थिंक ऑफ नेम ऑफ दैट डीमन इज डाउट 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 अबाउट गॉड You see, in Rama incarnation, he killed Ravana. Krishna incarnation killed Kamsa. Ram Krishna incarnation, he did not kill anybody. But he killed the greatest demon one can think of, as I said, doubt. Who in read the Gospel of Ram Krishna or Ram Krishna Jee Divine Play? It is hard to just believe God. That is the beauty of Sri Ram Krishna's messages. And life in this age, demonstration. God exists. Sri Ram Krishna continued, but this is not possible without intense love of God. One sees nothing but God everywhere. When one loves Him with great intensity, it is like a person with jaundice, who sees everything yellow. Then one feels. I am verily he, John Jays. If you have John Jays, you will see everything yellow. So when you have this love for God, you will see the love God in everywhere, everything. <coughs> How Sri Ram Krishna gave these illustrations? On another occasion, Ram Krishna said, "One cannot see God if one has even the slightest trace of worldliness. Matchsticks, if damp, won't strike fire through." Though you rub a thousand of them against the matchbox, you only waste a heap of sticks. The mind soaked in worldliness is such a damp majesty. Once Sri Radha said to her friends that she saw Krishna everywhere, both within and without. The friends answered, "Why we don't see him at all? Are you delirious?" Radha said, "Friends." Paint your eyes with the colorium of divine love, Anurag Anjan, and then you will see him. The title of the book: See God with Open Eyes. Somebody asked me that why did you put that title? <laughs> Sri Ram Krishna inspired me to put the title. He went to Brahman Samaj, and he saw everybody was meditating with closed eyes. Look what he said. He said to Vijay Krishna Goswami, "There was a time when I too would meditate on God with my eyes closed. Then I said to myself, 'Does God exist only when I think of Him with my eyes closed? Does not He exist when I look around with my eyes open?'" Now, when I look around with my eyes open, I see that God dwells in all beings. He is the indwelling spirit of all men, animals, and other living beings, trees, plants, sun, moon, land, and water. Sir, 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 He saw a prostitute on the street. Mother, you are here in another form. He does not see prostitute. You see, I see, but he sees the divine mother. Whole inner eye has been changed. I am just telling you how to see God. Your inside, your eyes must change. It will be divine eye, third eye, mental eye, spiritual eye. That eye we must open. Then you will see God in everything in every being. Not only that, Sri Ram Krishna experimented. When he was thinking, when somebody is saying, "Hey, your even Swami Ji says, sir, all you God vision, all these things is delusion. It is illusion for you." Bolish kire, Mama Shunge kotha bolle. What do you think? The divine mother talks to me. 
to which Swamiji was arguing with Sri Ramakrishna. Then Swamiji, Sri Ramakrishna, saw a big piece of a stone in front of the Nahabad, in Dokshineshwar, outside his room. Mother, if my visions are true, let that stone jump thrice. The stone moves thrice. You know, we read many books. We know the stories of many saints and seers of truth. But we have never seen such kind of demonstration as we find in Sri Ramakrishna's life. It demonstrated. When Keshav Shen was asking, Sir, what is Samadhi? Samadhi, 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 boom, gone. We have never, when you read the Gospel of Ramakrishna, how many times Sri Ramakrishna, most of the time he is in Samadhi. Amazing, amazing person. Another story that also inspired me to put this title. Sri Ramakrishna's nephew, Ramlal, told this story. If anyone would meditate or close his eyes while repeating the mantra inside the Kali temple, the master would tell him, What are you doing? You are seated here in front of the living mother. Look at her to your heart's content. Practice those spiritual disciplines elsewhere. Why you cannot get this direct experience? Suppose you have gone home to visit your mother. Would you sit before her and close eyes and repeat her name? <laughs> that really inspired me. When you visit, you will go to your mother and say, you know, you have gone home. Mother, sit down and then close your eyes and meditate on your mother. <laughs> then you are stupid. Just see your mother and talk to her and have fun with mother. Mom, I have come to see you. <laughs> and my mother, sit down and let me close my eyes and meditate. <laughs> Foolish. That really inspired me. With that Brahma, that incident and these two incidents put me in her mind that is the title, See God with Open Eyes. What was unique about the advent of Sri Ramakrishna? M replied. The master came to prove that God exists. He realized God in many ways, with form and without form. He also made it possible to, for him, for his intimate disciples to experience God. In those who have never met the master, focus their thoughts on him. He will graciously appear to them. He told the disciples, those who think of me inherit my treasures as children inherit their parents' wealth. The master's riches include knowledge, devotion, discrimination, renunciation, love, peace, mahabhava, samadhi, and so on. Does God exist? God is truly a mystery or to us because God is hidden. The world is God's playground and we are God's playmates. God loves to play the game of hide and seek with us. Christ said, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and ye shall be opened unto you. If we sincerely seek, we shall find God. The merciful Lord responds, responds when his children sincerely and wholeheartedly call for help. It is meditation that con connects us with God and makes our lives peaceful and blissful. As I said, the whole Christ said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This sentence was uttered 2,000 years ago. It is the gospel truth. It cannot be changed. Truth does not change. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. These words uttered from the Son of God. He is God.
imagination helps meditation is the science of calming the mind and achieving spiritual enlightenment various teachers worldwide have developed methods to still the restless mind i remember a funny story about meditation <laughs> it is a joke somebody sent me a clip cutting of a joke harry an american gentleman went to transcendent meditation and bought the mantra paying 125 dollars <laughs> and repeating mantra and his wife noticed that hari hari does not talk to hari any more much hari talk to me hari said look i bought the mantra i have to repeat the mantra <laughs> the wife was very much unhappy because her husband does not talk then he, she threatened him harry if you do not talk to me i shall leave harry said look i paid so much money i will have to repeat mantra <laughs> then after a few days she was disgusted she packed her suitcase and everything and told harry still there is time i am leaving please talk to me Harry closed his eyes and meditating. Then do you know what happened? Then she called a cab. She put her suitcases there. When the cab left, Harry opened his eyes and said, "Meditation works." <laughs> <laughs> That is a funny joke. <laughs> But don't take this one seriously. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Let me tell you about meditation. Vedanta says, taste, experience is the most important thing. Take it for granted that you will meditate sixty minutes. Fifty-nine minutes you failed. Fifty-nine minutes your mind was not focused. But one minute. it touched that one minute experience will stay with you i get 60 particles of sugar in front of you 59 i took away one particle of sugar i put on your tongue and if i ask how does it taste sugar tastes sweet if somebody says sugar tastes sour or bitter will you accept no my experience says sugar tastes sweet that is the way vedanta works here is a big piece of a stone and you want to break it 59 stroke failed did not break it on the 60th stroke it broke so are these 59 strokes useless or not no your behind this your 59 failure that success came is somebody asked the edison that when he discovered that battery and praising that what a great thing you have done <laughs> my goodness you are praising me i know 30000 methods do not work so when you sit for shine for meditation always remember If you can put a little, even for a moment, that's it. Meditation becomes very easy if you have love. You know, one thing I wanted to talk to you about that. in christian tradition jewish tradition islamic tradition brahmo tradition god has no form but god has qualities he is omniscient omnipotent omnipresent all this all merciful all powerful all these things they talk but he has no form 
Sri Ramakrishna solved that great dilemma in this age. God has form and again God is without form. You see a Christian, a American, a Western people world, you know how do they guide? How are they guided? Aristotelian logic. Ye, ye, ne, ne. Ye cannot be ne, ne cannot be ye. That is the way Western logic goes. Aristotle, Greek, philosopher. Now, when Aim asked Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna asked, is God with form or without form? Sri Ramakrishna says both. How can be both? He was confused. He was westernized. He got western education. He was confused. This is right, that is right. Both cannot be right. One should be wrong. No. Of course, Sri Ramakrishna gave an example. Hello. You drink water? Yes. Liquid, correct? Yes. Same water put into the freeze, it will be solid ice. Correct? Yes, sir. Same water you boil, it becomes vapor. Correct? Yes. So water is changing the position. Very rational. Very reasonable answer. Water is changing position. So God can change position. To a devotee, he has form. With a gani, no form. That's all. What an answer Sri Ramakrishna gave. God with form, without form, whatever you like, take it that way. You see, I have a friend, he is a professor of mathematics, he is British. He told me, Swami, I like Ramakrishna for two reasons. First, he never speaks anything which is irrational. As a Western, you know, philosopher or professor, I cannot swallow all the cocks and bulls, stories or myths and all those things. I cannot accept anything which is irrational, he told me. And second reason I like Ramakrishna, he, has an, he is expert in solving problems. If anybody comes, hello, sit down, listen to a story. Sri Ramakrishna tells a story and solves the problem. In the gospel you will see, you see on this one, Hello, sit down, listen to a story. He solves the problem. He's expert in solving the problem. <laughs> I remember when I was initiated, I asked my guru, Maharaj, will you now give us some advice? Mm. <laughs> he was like a tiger. <laughs> advice, only Upadesh. Nobody follows the Upadesh, only asks Upadesh. Only ask advice and advice. Nobody follow. <laughs> then, then he said, read the gospel of Ramakrishna. All the questions are answered. If Ramakrishna's answer does not help you, my answer will not help you either. Go. <laughs> gospel of Ramakrishna is a unique book in the religious history of the world. I, in this book, you will find the, I wrote the history of Ramakrishna gospel, gospel of Ramakrishna, and history of the Ramakrishna and the divine play, Lila Prasanga, and Ramakrishna scripture. What is Ramakrishna scripture? You see, in every age, avatar comes, and a new scripture develops. What is Christianity? What is Christian scripture? Jesus' life, Jesus' message, that is Christian scripture. What is Islamic scripture? Muhammad and Quran? What is... Our scriptures are many. You see, you, you try to read one lecture of Swamiji, it is in complete of volume 8. Is Vedanta the future religion of the world? In that lecture, Swamiji mentioned, if you want to build any kind of religion, you need three things. First, a personal God. Second, a prophet. Third, a scripture, a book. Any religion you see, Christianity, God, Jesus, Bible. Islam, Allah, Muhammad, Quran. 
three things, without these three things, you cannot form any kind of religion. But Vedanta is very interesting. We have, our God is not personal, it is impersonal. Satchi, Dhananda, Brahma. Existence, consciousness, bliss, absolute. That is God, according to Vedanta. Second, we have so many prophets. Prophets, many avatars, saints. We have plenty. We are not guided by one prophet or one avatar. Third, scriptures. We have so many Vedas, Upanishads, Gita, my goodness, thousands and thousands of scriptures. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> I remember one of my friends used to tease me. Hinduism is a very weak religion. Do you know why? Because God has to come again and again to reinforce it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at our Christianity. One Jesus, only the, the, the begotten Son of God. That's it. Islam, Muhammad Rasulullah, last prophet, that's it. Then he said, you have so many avatars. I'm going to look. God sometimes gets bored in heaven. He says, I have arthritis, let me go to the earth and check on my, how the children and my children are doing. So God comes to this earth and to check, you know. But why will really he go? If you come to the Christian land, he will be again crucified. <laughs> if you go to another religion, he will be beheaded then and there. So they come to India, we love God, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> we have no problem. <laughs> we can any, money, add any avatar we like. We are open-hearted people. <laughs> I have to make some sort of joke, what to do? <laughs> they say Hinduism is a very weak religion. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I told you something. Harinamananda invited me, Swami, please come. Just give us a talk. And it is not very hard for me. It just it takes one hour, 15 minutes to come here from Laguna, where I stay in my vacation time. So I'm glad that I could come and talk to you about it. And he mentioned, I, we brought some books. I shall be very glad to give autograph. Uh, if anybody wants to buy, I shall sign those books. Thank you very much. <laughs>